So my name is Jack Bourne. I'm the founder of Deadline Funnel, and I'm talking with uh, Jonathan Rivera, who is the king of podcasting. He's also uh, he's also involved in a lot of other cool sideline <laughs> businesses, and, and uh, so um, so Jonathan and I have known each other for for several years. And a while back, he was he was helping a mutual friend with a podcast, and so we started talking about Deadline Funnel, um, and that was really his first exposure to using Deadline Funnel. And I just found out a few minutes ago that he's using it in some really, really creative ways. So Jonathan, thank you for being here. And, and let's, let's go ahead and dive in and talk about how you're using Deadline Funnel. Jack, thank you for having me here. Everybody who tunes in, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully we can maybe share a tip or two that are useful for you, but I got to correct you. I actually have been using Deadline Funnel for a much longer time than that. Oh, I, you, I, used, I used it in my real estate business first. And then I added it into the marketing business. So when we started talking about that stuff for that podcast, I had already used oh, okay. it before right. it an account and I started a new account because I'm like, I know how it works and I know that it works and I'm excited to see which different ways I can make it work for me. Cool. Well, well I'm, I'm glad that you corrected me because I definitely want to talk about the real estate business. Let's, let's start there. Let's go in sequential order. So um, most most of the people that we talk to, uh, like our typical client is someone who sells an online course or something digital. And so there's a ton of great applications for that. We've interviewed a lot of successful entrepreneurs and given some, some really insightful case studies, but I'm, I'm really excited to talk about how it can be used in, in, in real estate. So, so how are you using it in this non-marketing, non-IM uh, way? Why don't you share that? Well, I, I wouldn't say it's non-marketing. It's heavy on the marketing, <laughs> but but it's not necessarily the way that we would think about this I am world. And that's actually one of the, I guess, one of the biggest hurdles that you're 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 feeding into one of my big problems. You make good software, and I love buying software, right? So <laughs> one of the problems I've had as an entrepreneur coming up, and it's been thirteen years or so that I've been out on my own, was just making sure that I'm using the right tool at the right time in the right place. And so what I did when I first got online is I started just learning all this stuff, didn't apply any of it. And my results were delayed for many, many years to the point where I almost quit because it was like, uh, why doesn't this work? I'm, I, I'm following all the brightest, shiniest objects. I'm buying all the softwares and all uh, I'm investing in all this stuff, but I'm not doing anything. And so I had a mentor who helped me out and it's Darren Persinger from the Making Agents Rich show. And he actually just woke me up. He's like, you got all these skills, right? You got this copywriting, you've got this marketing, you have internet skills that you can put stuff together online. And you're sitting around playing games here, trying to sell $7, $15, $25 products. And you're letting your real estate business sit on the sideline. Why are you doing that? And I'm sitting here like, I don't know why I'm doing that. That's a damn good question. Why am I doing that? So I turned around and used all the stuff I learned online from guys like Ben Settle with daily emails, um, uh, guys like you with the deadline. Just I took all that stuff out of this internet marketing world and plugged it into a real brick and mortar business, which is my real estate business. And I started using email marketing. Obviously, I was already running ads, so I knew ads before that. Then I added email marketing. Then I learned about scarcity and coupons, and we'll talk about all that. And I started seeing immediate improvements in that business. And see, while internet marketers are playing around trying to sell under 100 bucks and all, spending all this energy on that, I'm over here on this side selling $700 a month subscriptions, right? Because that's what a rental is. It's a, a monthly subscription on the land where nobody else even does this stuff. And so it's kind of exciting when these old school people that are trying to compete against me in the rental market see what I'm doing and they don't understand it because I'm light years ahead of them by taking all this IM stuff and applying it to a real business. Now, did I ramble on too much there? No, you, you, you touched on something that I, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you because we, we were talking about the real estate business, but obviously that, that's not specific enough. So I just want to be clear. Are you, are you, is your business modeled around a buy and hold type of strategy? Like you buy rental units and then you, you rent them out as, as the landlord? Yeah. So that, that, I mean, that's really what, what we have is rentals. And so 
I've learned a lot working in the rental business. And I've learned that there's like a, a 30 day cycle where your leads, if they don't convert in 30 days, they are probably not going to convert at all. And I've learned that the timeline to talk to them is much quicker where you might be thinking of nurturing somebody online for months. For me, it's like two weeks because most people are looking to move between now and the next four weeks or so usually. So learning all that stuff and all those little nuances has been interesting and then figuring out how to work that into the marketing that we're doing. Very, very cool. So I'm dying to know, how, how do you use uh, deadlines and specifically deadline funnel in your real estate rental business? All right. So I told you that I've had some good mentors. Ben Settle, mutual friend of ours, is one of them. And so that's actually where this whole turning my I am thing to IRL, right? In real life is what I'm calling it, bricks and mortar. Uh, I, I, the first thing I thought about was Ben, right? Ben taught me to write daily emails. And so that was the first piece I plugged into the business. I, I, I plugged in daily emails. It's uh, an email a day for 14 days. And then it's like a, a Dean Jackson nine word email, like seven days later, are you still looking for an apartment kind of thing? Because I know that that timeline that we talked about is, is shorter. So the first thing I did was daily emails. I was already running ads on Craigslist. I was already running ads on uh, Google pay-per-click. So that's my traffic source. They're going to my website, which my website is like bare bones. Just like, here's some information. Here's where you opt in. And then I went, I went and got some 1920s influence. I forgot who it was. I don't know. Anyways, I started adding coupons to the business, right? So everybody out there competing against me is like first month last month, security deposit, your left testicle. You know, they're asking for everything. <laughs> they're asking for everything for you to move into the apartment. And so I saw an opportunity there where I said, well, you know, security deposits suck. All right. And this is a real estate lesson. And people are going to just crap when they hear me say this, because with a security deposit, they're so com it's so complicated because you have to keep that in a separate escrow account. You can't touch that. And then when they move out, you have to have a checklist of what's coming off that security deposit and you have to do the accounting for that. And then you have to return the unfinished portion. And if you use it all, they're pissed at you because they were counting on that as a savings account. And so in my mind, security deposits complicate things. So I came up with a coupon that said no security deposit. Mm -hmm. That's all right. I'm, I'm just turning the idea into a coupon. And people were like, whoa, no security deposit. Oh, I got to use this. I got to use this. But that worked for a while. And it worked really well for us. I mean, it's in fact, it's still working to this day. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we still use that no security deposit special. What we did was we added a twist because we wanted more people calling quicker rather than sitting on the fence and making sure that we were getting the, the phone calls because we need phone calls so that we have appointments so that we can close deals. And I think it's like that in most any business. Um, so what we did was we added deadline funnel or we, me, <laughs> what I did, right? I'm going to take all the credit. Jack helped me by providing the software. But what I did was I added um, deadline funnel to it. So I didn't like that sometimes people weren't responding right away. And when I found out about your software, I'm like, hmm, kind of interesting. Maybe I can do a little twist on this coupon to increase that, that urgency that they have to use it. Oh, shit. And I also used AW, AW Pro Tools to make all this happen, too, because you used to own that one, too. <laughs> so I'm using all your stuff, right? So I, I, I started doing the uh, first email where I dropped the coupon. I put a deadline funnel on it and say, you have seven days to use this coupon. So now it's not only that they have a coupon that's saving them 700 bucks, but they have a very limited time to get that 700 bucks. And so when we added that to the front, phone calls just start coming in. Hey, 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 I got the coupon. I got the coupon. I want to come in. You know, the, people just acting totally differently than the nonchalant. I lost my coupon people. And so we've kept that in the mix with a deadline for seven days. And then their coupon goes from uh, it's 700. Now it goes down to 350. So they really have an incentive to use it mm -hmm. in those first seven days. And people come in with that thing printed up like here, here, here. I don't want to run out of time. Or if I called you, will you just mark it down? So I don't run out of time, stuff like that. But I never really, I, I, I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that is, that is just awesome. That is that is really great. I, uh, I I I did not before we had this conversation. I did not know that you were doing this, and this is this is just amazing to hear about. 
So I, I know that this isn't really the point of the conversation, but my curiosity, I got to go in this direction. So how do you, as a landlord, protect yourself? You know, that's what the security deposits for. You're going to paint the house or whatever. I mean, how do you, how do you mitigate that risk? Is it something you just build into the rest of your, your financial model? Yeah, so it's it's a, a way of looking at it. First of all, maintaining a separate account and maintaining accounting for all that. There's a cost to that for us as business owners with the bookkeeping, with managing that, with having that on the side. It just to me, it's annoying stuff. And when you do this long enough, you're going to realize that your security deposit doesn't cover much. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, if we took the whole 700 bucks, just the carpet alone would cost that to replace, not the appliances, not the paint, not the light fixtures. So it's really such a small little thing that it covers that I don't think it it is a big risk to us. Now I could be wrong, but so far I've seen it work out for us. What happens with the way that we have our funnel set up based on kind of scarcity, exclusivity, because we only have so many units. Uh, We only have one available right now and we have a bunch of people applying for them because we have marketing, we have new leads coming in, cold leads, we have referrals coming in, we have renewals coming in. So with all that stuff, it gives us a larger pool of people to choose from. And what it has done for us in our place is help us elevate the game, right? Because if somebody uh, is, is not of high quality, right? They're going to probably ruin the place. But when you get more and more applications, you get to say, all right, these are our standards. These people meet or exceed the standards. And then you choose the best one. So we start looking at more applications and we see this guy's been at his job 23 years, been renting his apartment for 16 years. Yeah. I don't think there's a risk there. We're going to rent to those people that are really well established. Um, I mean, we look at everybody that meets our criteria, but we have so many candidates come in that we get to choose the best. That's, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, you, so you have so you have better lead flow. You can be choosier, uh, so you mitigate your risk that way. And also, I would, uh, from what I've heard, your one of the biggest expense expenses in that business is having having a unit sitting uh, unoccupied, and so you, right. you you reduce the time that it's unoccupied. So that's that's brilliant. Very very cool. Um, before we switch to your your digital enterprises um, and podcasting and those sorts of things, um, is there anything else that we haven't covered about how you're how you're using deadlines and coupons in um, in your real estate business, or should we move on to the digital? Yeah, I think it's it's uh, it's a matter of having a real world value and having something that is a. Uh something that they can lose for real, like, you know, paying no security deposit versus paying 700 is, is a big impact on middle class income. So making sure that you have some scarcity in place around something that actually matters, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, right. that that's probably a key in, in why this works for us. Beautiful. So why don't, why don't you talk about your, your podcasting business or anything that you want to in, in terms of how your how you're using deadlines in your in your digital marketing? So a couple ways, uh, and let's see. Let's start off with the 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 geekier way, okay. right? Because I don't. I'm I I'm going to give you credit because you and Anthony and your team and all that stuff. You guys are in that little bottom corner. Anytime I need help, box like <laughs> come save me. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so you guys have awesome support. So it allows me to do weird things with this, with this software. And so one of the things that I was testing out for the last couple months is I run the podcast factory. We do podcast production products, all that kind of stuff, help people build their authority. And I don't have any info products. I don't have any low ticket stuff, so to speak. So my whole close is let's do an application. Let's find out if you're a good fit for me and I'm a good fit for you and I can help you get the results you're looking for. And I do that all by application and phone call. So not very techie, right? And so what I wanted to do was figure out how I can integrate a deadline because I know how powerful they are in my real estate business. And I know that people won't get up off their ass unless they have a hard deadline staring down at them and they have to make a decision. And so I wanted to integrate deadline funnels into my process. And so my funnel is very uncomplicated. You 
hear about me and you think you want to get a podcast done for you, you go to a page, you get on my waiting list, right? Because it's not always open. It's not, op it's definitely not open the day you sign up. I can guarantee you that. Right. But I wanted to do a rolling, like a rolling type of thing. And so what I figured out was by using a web hook with deadline funnels and my uh, autoresponder that I could have a seven day deadline. So that way I could open it up once every seven days and give them a countdown. Right. So I, I don't even know how to explain this nerdiness. You guys walked me through all of this when I was setting it up. But somebody signs up today. It's Tuesday or Wednesday by Friday. Well, they get hit with the web hook. So the countdown starts in the background. They don't even know it. Right. And so by Friday, I'm saying, all right, so Monday, I'm going to take applications. Be ready. Tuesday or uh, sa Saturday, it's a couple more emails, applications opening up Monday, Sunday. Hey, applications opening up on Monday. And by the time they get there Monday, that's the page where they first see the deadline. And depending on where they signed up, it's only going to be a seven day deadline. So if they signed up seven days ago, the scarcity is this thing's closing today. If they signed up four days ago, they still have three more days, but they're forced into that zone of thinking, all right, I signed up for this. All right, time is counting down. Am I going to take action on it? That's and great. it has increased my close rates. Like, because I have, I need to increase my prices, I think, because my close rates have gone up. Because <laughs> <laughs> it used to be like 30, a 30% 30 close rate. And lately I'm running at like 50 or 60. Right. And so I think that the prices need to go up. But that scarcity and forcing them into making a decision has been really instrumental in getting more applications and getting me on the phone with more qualified people. Awesome. That's that's fantastic. Um, by the way, give out your for anyone who wants to start a podcast. Why don't you talk a little bit about what the podcast factory does? Give out your URL and just just give a short little um I'll call it a commercial, but just just tell people tell people why, like like what sort of uh, what sort of needs you you fill um, that are currently unmet if someone doesn't go with you. Yeah, so that, no, there's look, there's tons of people that do podcasts, and I encourage you to look at all of them. That's fine. What I do is I work with busy business owners who don't want to build teams, who don't want to get into the tech stuff, who just want to get their ideas out into the world as simply as possible. And so what we do is we plug our team into their operation. We help them have a podcast, get all that stuff done for them. So all they're doing is talking into a mic, we're taking care of the rest, and then they get to market it. And so if you're busy and you want to get your message out there, but you don't want the learning curve, that's kind of where we help. And we usually work best with people uh, that are established, like you have to have an email list, you have to have products for sale, you have to have a marketing budget, because it's easy for me to help you amplify your results. But if you have no results, there's there's nothing to amplify, plain and simple. And you can find out about me at thepodcastfactory.com. I like how you got extra close to the microphone to make sure <clears throat> that came through mm -hmm. nice and clear. I'm a pro, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> what I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, what the, the phrase that I always love from, from Perry Marshall, from my years at Perry Marshall is he would say, you can't steer a parked car. Um, and so in, in this, in, in the same way, I tell people all the time, so look, deadline funnel is going to amplify whatever you have going on. But if, if you've got a, a bad marketing and a bad product and you're not communicating it right, you know, it's not, it's not a, a, a magic bullet, you know, um, it does some incredible things. But it's not gonna it's not gonna take something that's DOA and and breathe life into it. Okay. No way. <clears throat> so um, b besides the, the the podcast business, and that's that's another interesting application because that's still that's still outside the normal realm of what of what our our typical client does. Like our typical client has someone who comes in and, and it's um, um, actually actually the way that you're applying it is is pretty similar because we we've I've interviewed other people like James Schramko who do um, rolling rolling launches and things like that so uh, but I, I kind of get the sense that there's another yet another business under the uh, Jonathan Rivera umbrella is there is mm -hmm. there another application for for how you're using deadline funnel actually uh, not even another business but maybe closer to what people are doing and okay. so I'm I'm about to get all cliche on you, but you know, high ticket sales, right? Right. That's the thing. High ticket. I saw high ticket. <laughs> right. All right. So let's talk about 
high ticket. Okay. <laughs> if you're doing stuff like that, like our packages start at three grand and 600 a month and then, and, and they go up from there. So that's probably high ticket. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is when I get on my sales calls, because that's, you won't find anything on my website about what we charge, what we do or any of that stuff, because I need to talk to you to make sure that you're a good fit and we're a good fit or else I don't want to waste anybody's time. But there's what I found in these calls is there's usually about two or three things that people need. And actually I got this, I don't know if you've talked, did Igor K Fetz have you on his show? I don't know if you've talked to him yet. Uh, I think we but, talked, but I don't think we've connected yet. Anyways, he, he, um, sometimes he schools me because I, I co-host a show with him list building lifestyle. Uh, and he's another deadline funnels user, by the way. Um, but, He's like, you gotta, you gotta give people uh, something. Like on the sales calls, I used to not do it, right? On the sales calls, it'd just be like, this is it. Is it a fit or not? And that's it. But he's like, you gotta give something that you can take away to help motivate them. You have to have some sort of scarcity there. And I, I didn't, I didn't really do that in the beginning, probably because I was charging really cheap, and people would always just sign up, like, oh, that's it. Yeah, here you go. Take my credit card. <laughs> So that's probably part of it. But as I went raising my prices, things changed. My numbers changed a little bit. And Igor told me, you got to have some sort of takeaway. So what I figured out is in most of the people I talk to, they either want to build their authority uh, further by using the podcast and leveraging that. And so they probably want to get interviews done or guest booking or, or stuff like that. Then there's people that uh, are looking for leads. And so they might be more motivated by a bonus of perhaps me helping them create a mini product to help them get their opt-ins. And then there's yet another person every once in a while, I get flexible on this, it's very rare. But if somebody's got a little bit of a price sensitivity, sometimes I say, well, that's the trigger, right? So if somebody wants interviews, I offer them as a bonus, sign up the next 24 hours, and I'll hook you up with uh, one month of our podcast blitz. Somebody wants the, the mini product thing or wants to come up with a product, sign up next 24 hours, and we'll do that. So I, I took it to the, the price sensitive people because I felt like they needed more motivation. And every once in a while, if they're referred to me by someone who has my old pricing and has given it away, sometimes I'll, I'll get close to that or honor it. And what I do is I have a deadline link. So after the phone call, I do a follow up, your podcast show. And I, I recap the conversation because I take, I mean, I'm just sitting there taking notes when I talk to people. So I recap our conversation, their goals and everything. And I say, seems like maybe I might be able to help you make this decision a little bit easier. So here's a link where if you sign up, you'll save 30%, let's say, right? 30%, but it's only for the next 24 hours. So they click the link, they get hit with my deadline funnel cookie. And there it is right on, the, on my Sam cart page, countdown. Like, and as soon as it disappears, the price goes up. I have the second page set up for full price, right? After they're done with their countdown. And that has been working interestingly for me. I don't like to get too many price sensitive people, but like I said, when it's a referral, mm -hmm. I will be a little more flexible because that's a better deal for me. I'm going to have to pay for that lead. And uh, it's been working for me quite interestingly to see people like, oh, you know, tripping over themselves <laughs> to give me money. So that that's kind of a fun application as well. That's awesome. Let's let's finish up with. Are you? Would you be willing to talk about the how how we kind of work together with um, Kevin Rogers? Um, I, I, know, I know that you said there's there's numbers that you can't share or or you don't have yet. But um, can can we talk about how you were planning on using that with Kevin Rogers, one of your clients? We actually used it, and we used it for a very short time. We didn't get to run it that long because we we changed up the way we were, we were doing things. Uh, but the way it was set up is. Uh, similar. And actually, I think that's where I, yeah, this is where I got the idea. When you gave us the idea of using it for Kevin like that, mm -hmm. that's when I, I took it and I implemented it into my rolling uh, deal, which I'm talking nerd talk. None of this shit makes any sense if you're following along at home, <laughs> but, but it's fine. So the way that we did it was Kevin has Copy Chief, uh, a forum, a community that you can join, monthly membership, I think it's 100 bucks a month or something like that. But what he does is he keeps it closed and he only opens it up three or four times a year, something like that. So we were trying to figure out how we could get more action from the podcast. Mm -hmm. And when we were all sitting around at that table, you helped us come up with the idea where we were going to go ahead and give people 
24 hours to sign up for Copy Chief by click or uh, following the URL we gave on the show. It was a special URL. Go to this URL, skip the line at Copy Chief because there's all these people waiting for the doors to open. You have 24 hours to join. And it actually was working like from podcast to sale, right? And that's something most people can't do. Right. And it was because we had something of real value, just like I told you, the coupon and saving money off that, um, off the security deposit was real world value. These people couldn't get into Copy Chief, and now they had a 24 hour window. They already knew Copy Chief. They were interested in Copy Chief, or they wouldn't be listening. They probably know it's closed, and when they hear that call to action on the show, they go there and they're hit with the deadline, like join now. You got 24 hours because if not, it goes away and you can't get in and you're back on the way. So it's like taking the velvet rope, unclicking it, you're coming in. And we made some sales with that. We actually directly from the podcast started making sales. I wish we could have run it a little longer to get some more data, but it did work. That's great. Awesome. Jonathan, I, this, is, this has been really enlightening. Uh, very, very enjoyable to hear, hear you talk about all the different ventures that you're in. Um, I want to have more conversations with you offline about how you're running your real estate business. But for right now, I want to I say thank you for, for your time and sharing how you're using it in your various different enterprises. Why don't you, um, if you could, lean back in towards the microphone and make sure everyone heard the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Podcast Factory URL. Uh, it's right here. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Thepodcastfactory.com. And if you like Jack and you like the way that he thinks, a lot of the people that he hangs out with, a lot of his contemporaries are over at the Podcast Factory. We're just waiting for Jack to come on board. But marketing, closing sales, all that kind of stuff. You can go there and listen to shows. We have something like 15 or 20 shows there that you can listen to right now. 15 different hosts talking about different stuff. Thepodcastfactory.com. Very cool. Thank you so much, Jonathan.